Every entrepreneur dreams of overcoming all challenges to experience the sweet taste of success and to see their business soar to unrivaled heights. Uffin Bank propels your business forward by offering banking without barriers and supporting your business goals. Hi everyone, welcome to our Pro ProfitMax Entrepreneurs Network Bridging event. And today we are privileged to have uh, to have a couple of guests with us. And the topic for today is I've decided to choose uh, talk about property outlook in the coming year and maybe beyond, no? And why did I choose this? Because if I look around and some of you see it as well, the people who are still okay or doing well during this pandemic crisis are people who have had invested their resources. No? And a lot of people in Malaysia like to invest in property. So many of us have got property or are thinking of property or somehow related to property. You know? So you could be yourself maybe wanting to sell off one of your properties or you could be your, your child or your son or daughter could be thinking about buying a property before they settle down, whatever, you know. So property is always a very topical issue. And so I thought today we, be, we can uh, tap into the brains of these two gentlemen. So first of all, we have uh, Isaac. Isaac mm, is a veteran in the property valuation area. And then we also have Kevin Lowe, uh, who's in real estate for many years and has written a book called uh, Follow the Trains. So to start off, I'm going to ask Isaac to maybe tell us about, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your business and what you do and all that, a bit of background. So I'll give you maybe a minute or so. Okay. Um, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, like Peter said, I'm, I'm a valuer. I've been a valuer too long. I've done this, bit, this thing for more than 40 years. Uh, I hope you're a valuable valuer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been doing this too long. Uh, that's the only thing I know what to do, uh, uh, how to do. Uh. So um, uh, one thing about property is, you know, it, it, it remains a, a, a very large part of everybody's life. Whether it is just a roof over your head or, you know, you inherited some properties or you need to manage them in, as far as rentals are concerned and all that. I like doing, um, helping the, these people out to solve their property issues. And uh, on the corporate side, I also help out uh, corporations look at land, uh, what they can do with their developments and all that. So um, I guess today's topic about buy now or wait and all that, maybe uh, I, can, I can dwell on it later to to uh, talk about what sectors you are talking about. Okay, thanks, Peter. Thanks, Isaac. Okay, over to you, Kevin. Tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Happy Merdeka. So, uh, yes, happy Merdeka. I, I grew up in from Luck. I grew up in Malacca <laughs> so that I can speak quite well in Malay. So, I'm but I'm not Baba. Okay, I complete my university uh, USM. Then later on, I was uh, my former promotion. Uh, I was in a semicon industry before for seven years uh, in Penang. But after 2012, I made a move from the engineering into real estate. Why? Because uh, before that, when I was in Penang, I already started invest in property. I was a property investor. And then later on, I can become a property agent. Since 2012, start from zero in KL. So for past many years, I, I now I mainly focus on industrial and also corporate real estate. Uh, now I attach to Rahim and Co. And uh, like Peter mentioned, and this is my book that I, <laughs> like I published. Hey, you cannot see, huh? you cannot see very clear. So this is a book actually is a short century project. Lah. Basically just want to, uh, to share something related to the property near the transition. Because back to year 2016-17, right? <laughs> Property near the train station, MRT was hot topic. People say, bye, 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 bye. But I, in my opinion, and this is my personal opinion, right? Developer uh, sell future price. So those uh, new projects near the MRT station, 
mostly are not go buy because the price too high. So we do we did this analysis it just also to, for me to find out <clears throat> to find out the pricing the movement average to to verify my fact. <clears throat> but I cannot tell that because it will offend the developer. So those people talk to me privately. I say, hey, those people, the new development <clears throat> near the MRT don't buy first because the price too high. They sell future price. If I'm a developer, of course I want to sell future price. So at the investment is different. Had to do a lot of due diligence. Yeah, I think that's uh that's all for the quick uh introduction. Uh, back to you, Peter. Okay, great. So I learned something really in the early stages of our talk today. You know, something called future value. <laughs> okay, all right. So maybe to start off, let's look at the current property market. No, is there an opportunity or gap in the sector, or are we still in for maybe softening market? Uh, what what do you think, uh, Isaac? How do you see the current market? Can I share a screen? Huh? Can I share a screen? Yeah, sure. Hang on there. Eh? You want to show a slide, is it? I want to show one slide to set the stage uh, for the property market overview. Okay. Go ahead. Now, um, in order to talk about property in general and what you ought to do about uh, property, the industry, you, you need to know what is the current scenario as far as the country's economy as well as the different property sectors are concerned. Um, reports tell us that GDP last year uh, was 5.6%, uh, it contracted 5.6%, so it is, a, it is a minus. And uh, the, the closest that we were in this situation was the last financial crisis in 1998, where it contracted 7.4. This year, the first quarter of 2021, it also contracted, but in the second quarter of this year, the, there were positive uh, um, uh, growth. And the projection for this year, for the whole of this year was three to 4%. But Fitch Solutions, uh, where they did the G GDP graph and projection, uh, actually turned it to zero. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Yeah, we can see the screen. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can see. Uh, yeah. You can see uh, yes. So for Fitch Solutions, they have actually moved it to zero for this year. That tells us something. Yeah. Now, um, the economy for last year did not do well. We know very much was because of the COVID and the pandemic. This year, we thought we were opening up again, but June, we started closing, and hopefully from now onwards, we will move up again. But it will take some time before things even come back to any normalcy, eh? maybe even one year down the road. So that's why um, the, the projection during uh, uh, for this year may, may be zero growth. So um, that sets the stage of what you can, you can imagine what the property market will do. Lah. So, so it's very important to, to, to have this uh, uh, situation in mind that uh, property did not do well last year. This year may also uh, be quite stagnant. As you can see in the next uh, three, three sentences, the NAPIC 2020 um, uh, figures show that in 2020, uh, 295 trans 295,000 transactions of uh, 119 billion value was transacted. But in um, but in uh, 2019, the volume was higher, so that there was a drop of uh, volume as well as value compared to 2019. Before okay. the pandemic, 2019, we did okay because there was no pandemic. But okay. 2020, we dropped in sales value as well as volume. Yeah, that's quite serious. Yeah. Um, so, Isaac, I'm just going to interview to ask you to explain to people who may not know what is yeah. NAPIC. Oh, okay. NAPIC is actually short for National Property Information Center. The National Property Information Center is a division under the Ministry of Finance. Uh, that not housing, out, uh, not Ministry of Housing. Uh. 
No, no. It is under Ministry of Finance. Okay. It turns out uh, property information, both on performance, on uh, transaction, values and all that. So if you look at year 2020, it did worse off than 2019. Now, 2021 will even go down further. Will even go down further. Okay, because of what's happening around us. And uh, mostly because of pandemic. But I must mention the political situation is the other, the other big factor that caused uh, property not to move. Because you see, the, the, the government lockdowns and all that have actually caused a lot of disruption to the property industry. So you, you, you would be able to understand and, and, and uh, appreciate that the, the, the property market is very, very badly affected, both by the economy, uh, down to, I mean, the, the recession, as well as the government policies and government actions that is happening around us. Very quickly, the residential and commercial, you can see there. Numbers also show the same thing. Uh, 2020 compared to 2019, they, they really have dropped. Uh, commercial also same thing. Both sales value and sales volume have dropped. So when you say what you want to do with property and outlook, uh, the outlook, the outlook is not so good. The outlook is not so good for the even for the rest of the year. I think for anything to come back will be at least one to two years from now, and it really depends very much on what how the government policies will unfold because it's very important to know. Uh, like for us, uh, uh, we just recently got METI approval to do work uh, outside our offices, meaning we can travel and go and inspect properties. Without the METI approval, uh, we've been locked down since June. So although the banks are open, um, transactions in the bank, loans and all that, they, they're, they're not moving at all. So uh, when, you, when you are at this kind of property situation, it's very important to know who you are, who you are as, as regards to what you want to do in property. Of course, if I look at residential, if you need a roof over your head, you know, anytime is a good time to buy. Lah. There is a proverb that says that the best time to buy property was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. That is, that is the proverb which is it's so relevant to residential property, you know, even in generally real estate. Best time to buy 20 years ago because you know by the financial uh, uh, numbers, uh, 20 years ago and now uh, property would have raised in terms of value two to three times. But if you're buying a, a house or a roof over your head, any time is a bad time, a good time. So you need to look at all the merits of the property that you're gonna purchase. If you're buying for investment, I would think that you will have to wait for a while and see what happens because as I said, things are not moving very well, quite stagnant and all. If um, you want to look at uh, uh, specific sectors, then it is a different story. Because in any crisis, there are opportunities. So if you are an investor, you may look at locations, you may look at rental use, and you may look at uh, possible capital appreciation in the next uh, two to three years. Because if you can identify a below market value, uh, property now because of the market situation, go in, buy for investment, giving you reasonable rental yield and wait for capital appreciation. You see, the market has to bounce back, whether it is one year, two years and all that, it will bounce back. But if you are entering now, make sure that you do your arithmetic and uh, go for the type of property that would be able to give you reasonable you now and the potential of capital appreciation. That's how okay. I look at that situation. Next. Thanks, Peter. Okay, good. Yeah. So just to clarify for everyone, um, I guess I guess what you're saying in your slide there is 
when you say 65% market share, you're referring that out of the total market, the residential sector is 65%. Correct. And industrial and commercial make up the balance, 35. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. There's also so, there's also uh, agriculture sector which was not put in. Uh, okay. But that sector is probably about ten percent. Uh. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So um, before I ask Kevin to comment, uh, um, what what I wanted to ask Kevin actually is, what 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 should property owners consider now? Uh, and if you have any comments to what I just asked earlier. In terms of the current property market scenario, if you have anything to add, Kevin? Yeah, I just want to <clears throat> anchor uh, KP Ng uh, about his point of view. So, in generally, it is a buyer market. It's a buyer market. It means there's yes. a lot of choices. So, I split into the investment and also uh, 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 investor and also individual uh, buyer. For example, if people financially is uh, able to buy, buy for upgrade, right? Now is the best time. Why? There are two points can buy at the property at a cheaper price. Secondly, is a financing at a lower cost, lower interest. <clears throat> so uh, last year, don't be surprised, uh, <clears throat> during the MCO, there are a lot of uh, buyer upgrade from the uh, link house, for example, to Semidi. Because Semidi, they can buy 1 million, for example. Last time, previously, they 1.2, now they can buy 1 million. And the installment for the <clears throat> 1 million loan is only like 4,000 or 4,000 plus ringgit, for example. So it is the best time for those uh, end user to upgrade, provided those are the cash rich or maybe they are financial a bit uh, better. La. <clears throat> okay, for, for investor, those are the property investor. It's uh, quite bad to, uh, to those investors if their property is vacant because the uh, business is not doing well, the tenant is not doing well, they're leaving. <clears throat> so it's a time to get the, the property rented out as far as possible, even with cheaper rental. Uh, those glorious day, for example, oh, I can rent 5,000. Now, don't say no more already rent out as cheap as possible to seal through the hard time. <clears throat> and also, uh, we can see auction market is uh, getting more and more attractive. But don't rush in. There are a lot of choices. Make sure you get a good property, good investment with a, <clears throat> with a uh, financial you are state. A person must be uh, had a better holding power. So this is my personal opinion. <clears throat> We're talking about what property owner to consider. I think another one is uh, property... When property is staying in the property, uh, price up or down, they don't really impact much because the owner is staying inside the house. For example, Peter, if your house uh, go up for 20%, unlikely you're going to sell it. If the property value down 20%, unlikely you're going to move out as well. So people, owner will continue staying. <clears throat> what the owner can do, right? One thing is uh, consider refinancing. Refinancing because of the, the re last time, the, the interest is higher. They can refinance to lower. This is the one possible uh, option for those uh, prop, uh, property owner <clears throat> and uh, and also uh, in this uh, period of time right those property those property owner has a landed property right because now the price is not good you can uh, keep on to hold it first if you can because we can see right and uh, this june july august uh, landed property housing not not really dropping the price yeah not really dropping the price so it's a good indication that landed properties is in demand. And this COVID, right, people were scared like hell, like uh, walking in the lift. They don't want to touch people, you know. They're getting more and more obvious uh, to like uh, social distancing. So landed property is getting more and more traction. People want to buy a landed property. <clears throat> so those uh, property owners, you got landed property, don't let go. Don't let go your uh, landed property because that is, could be a, uh, the, the price is always uh, appreciation will be there. Yeah, that's my personal point of view. Back to you, Peter. Okay, good. So don't let go if you're having landed property. Yeah? Very good advice. Yeah, and uh, I can notice you know, the apartment uh, rentals are going down, vacancies are increasing and all that. Okay, good. Um, the next thing I wanted to discuss, by the way, uh, those of you who have questions, please type into the chat and we'll, we'll, we'll answer the questions after this. And I see a few questions really, very good. Um, but my next question, maybe we can continue <coughs> Continue with you, Kevin. Uh, what are some of the pitfalls to watch out for as investors? So what you're yep. saying is, both of you are saying is, now may not be the good time to buy unless you get a bargain bottom price because someone is selling out of necessity, right? 
Um, Any pitfalls okay, to watch out for? Let, let, yep. let me let me start first. Uh. As a property okay. investor, right? I think the always number one thing uh, to, <laughs> to be aware uh, is uh, the exit plan. Mm. Well, uh, there are people actually buying a property like, wow, it sounds good to buy. Good investment they buy. But actually, it's a, there's no proper exit plan or thinking or uh, thought about it. What I mean exit plan, it means, for example, how long I'm going to hold this property? Who will be buying my property after three or five years? Exit plan is extremely important. For example, if I buy the property, it's a GRR, a hotel, kind of the things, right? I can tell you, 99% you can't sell to the end user. End user will not buy because that is not an end user product. It's mm. an investment product, for example. Yeah. So, so exit plan must be very clear. If not, we have a clear exit plan, right? People will buy a wrong product. It's not buying a vegetable. Uh, if I don't like it, I can throw away. And uh, this product is a property. It's not easy to dispose. It, it, it is not a good demand property. So don't simply buy property. I think the exit plan is extremely important. Mm. If those you guys uh, don't really understand what is that, we can have a, uh, you can call me to talk about it and discuss about it. Okay. And uh, secondly, it's uh, investment strategies. People have a different uh, uh, investment strategy. For example, they're using individual name, using company, uh, investment holding, uh, buying with a partnership or the flipping strategy, buy and refurbish and sell or holding forever. So with a different Im- investment strategy also will determine which type of property to buy. That is very different uh, from the buying for own usage and also buying for, for, the, for the investment. Because uh, for own usage, they have a different, uh, different con- consideration. Or feng shui, or facing west is bad for me. I don't buy west, for example. But investment, I don't care. Because I'm not the one staying in. The most important, uh, there are some people who like the west, for example. So investment consideration and also own usage is different, different consideration. And, uh, and uh, I will say, uh, I will say, uh, be very clear what type of property not to buy. I think that is very crucial. Mm. For example, GRR. If there is a guaranteed return, right? Uh, be very cautious. I, I, I don't say all GRR is not good, but majority GRR is not good. Why? Because the product cannot sell the developer factor in GRR. For example. Mm. And also like office. I, I'm not person uh, favor for office. Why? Because uh, those business people, when they start a business, they will rent the office they don't buy. When they upgrade, then they were actually look, uh, looking for bigger office space. And the office is not easy to uh, dispose. When, uh, when after I don't want it, I want to dispose. It's not easy compared to residential because end user is a bigger market. Office is smaller market, uh, not, to, um, not, not preferable to buy as investment. If you invest, go to commercial, don't buy office, for example. Uh, both are commercial. Why? Just go to a commercial a lot better. Don't, don't go to office, for example. And uh, those are hotel related products don't buy at all. Like for example, like what time sharing, uh, you buy this hotel with a return. After that, you can stay for 10 days, for example, right? <clears throat> There's a one clause, uh, every three years, the refurbishment cost uh, were 50,000, 100,000. You may not know about it. And this is a product extremely hard to dispose. For example, <laughs> Very disp- who will buy? I, Only investor will buy. I wish, Unless, I, uh, wish I had this advice on timeshare 25 years ago. I lost money on my timeshare. Uh, <laughs> unless, uh, unless a person uh, is very rich, uh, they buy it to keep their mistress. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think there's no reason uh, people buy this kind of product. Really, really. It's, 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 yeah, not, yeah. it's not an investment product because it's very difficult to exit. exit. Yeah, this yeah. is um, what I'm talking about. <clears throat> yeah. And also, uh, uh, like people talking residential right i will say that uh, unless it's uh, those uh, expected area right try to avoid go to studio unit a residential try to avoid i repeat again uh, try to avoid invest in studio studio is because it's cheap don't buy because it's cheap people buy studio cheap uh, they can rent out because it's like uh it's like for example or oh, can can rent out faster but unless uh, the purple people they buy to keep long term it's different sorry if I buy a studio with the intent maybe three years uh, or five years or ten years on to sell, right? Studio comparison to the two-bedroom or three-bedroom, right? Is the most difficult and challenge to sell. Why? Very simple. Let's say two-bedroom is cost about 400000 At what? Single uh, a studio cost 300000 My as well, I pay another 100000 extra, I buy two-bedroom. As an end-user perspective, we must know about end-user perspective. Exit plan will determine your what type of property you want to buy or you want to rent. So you must really clear what type of property try to avoid. And also another one is uh, 
new development, commercial new development, also try not to go in far fast. Because uh, sometimes investor there is uh, something like that, uh, a bit kiasu, uh, is like fear of uh, losing out. Wow, there is a new launch, uh, people all jumping in. Especially commercial, don't jump in first. For example, it will take years become uh, it become popular. Yeah. If, if it never be popular, means it will forever not popular. Yes. Uh, I can give a good example. Plaza Jurutong. The entire occupancy less than 10%. Until now, still less than 10% after 10 years. For example, there are many, like uh, those millennium square. I think only like uh, 20% occupancy. Those are retail lot. All those are retail lot. Try avoid at all. Uh, there is a Nilai, uh, Nilai, Nilai, Nilai Plaza. What well, with GR return per square feet, 1000 per square feet. Now you can go there, it's the totally empty, zero tenant. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. so those are very crucial not to buy. Uh, I, uh, yeah, if those, uh, you, you, those of you, you want to know more about it, you can just PM me later on. I will share with you more. Okay. okay. I think that's my sharing at this moment. Back to you, All Peter. Right. Okay, so uh, over to Isaac. Now, in terms of pitfalls to avoid, and any advice for people who are investing in property, and I okay. guess I guess taking it from what what uh, Kevin said, I also want to just maybe mention that uh, you know, when you look at exit strategy or exit plan, I think you first start off by what's your investment objective, no? Yeah, so we have to consider what's our investment objective. That will also determine the exit plan. Okay, so over to you, Isaac. Correct, Peter, and um, um, uh, um, well said, Kevin. Um, property is a very long-term play. So it's very important that you determine what your plan is. You need to plan out what, when we are talking about property investment, we are talking about uh, what do you want to do? You said rightfully, Peter, what is the strategy? What is your expectations and all that? So um, it's... Uh, one of the pitfalls is actually knowledge. Um, a lot of people who uh, blindly go into investment uh, do not realize that the, the numbers do not add up if you don't realize that in the next few years, anything might, but of course, you don't have a crystal ball, uh, but with uh, enough knowledge and uh, a lot of uh, common sense, if I may use the word, that, that you, you are able to make wise decisions with regards to what to do, whether it is residential condo investments or commercial shop house investments or even office. Um, knowledge, knowledge is very important. And um, one of the things that are uh, very important is also those days we talk about the developer uh, uh, reputation. Reputation as regards to whether they are established there are reliable developers and all that because when you put money into a property investment, it's a long-term play. So it's important to realize and plan out and study and research before you actually put your money. So um, over the years, uh, I think 10, 20 years ago, uh, a lot of people do encounter this kind of pitfalls. But with the internet age, with uh, social media and all that, a lot of uh, information is available. Uh, even con consultants uh, who, who can actually give you advice uh, over a digital platform will be able to give you knowledge about what to do. So it's important to acquire knowledge and make an a, a informed decision before you go on to property investments. Peter. Okay, very good, excellent. Yeah. yeah, I just want to uh, turn, turn ourselves to another area now. Huh? Just now we started out by talking about property outlook and all that. And lately, we've been hearing, not rumors, but actual some kind of announcement that the government is going to, what do you call, put in new restrictions on the MM2H plan. And there's all kinds of jumping coming out, especially from the expert community, uh, some of them are saying, look, we're going to sell our property and get out of here and all that. And there's a pessimistic outlook that says that if 90% of the MM2H people have put their money in, were to take their money out, it's something like to the tune of 75 billion ringgit worth of property. So assuming that's not true, right? Assuming it's only going to be half of that figure, it's still a huge impact. 
I just want to get you two guys as professionals in the marketplace. What do you think or how much impact do you think it really has uh, if this MM2H regulations, new regulations are going to come into place? How much impact do you think it will have on the market? Um, I'll go first, right, Kevin? Okay. The, yep, new, yep. the new rules and guidelines on the MM2H thing is a bummer, really, because because it is going to cause a lot of disruption. Not that we are doing so fantastically well. Uh, started about 10 years ago, and uh, every year you get about maybe, I don't know, five to 10,000 uh, foreigners coming into Malaysia to actually um, uh, enjoy the benefits of um, Malaysia, my second home. In, in many areas, in cost of living, in quality of life and all that. Uh, but I don't know what is in the mind of these people uh, who are turning it topsy-turvy because those days it was just, um, I don't know, 150,000 FD. Now they want 500,000. Then they have, uh, have to have uh, income from a foreign source uh, those days of 10,000, now they want 40,000. It's crazy. I mean, if you have rules like that, uh, these people, rightfully, you're, you're right, Peter, these people will actually uh, start to leave. But, but I must qualify that statement. Uh. Uh, I also read somewhere that the existing 30,000 or something like that, who are already in the midst of the 10-year visa, uh, now is turning to five years, uh, if they are in the midst of the five, uh, 10 year visa, they are not affected by the new rules. I think they will, they will, uh, they, they need to complete the 10 years and still have the old rules attached to their MM2H visa. So only the new people from here on will be affected. The new people from here on, the foreigners wanting to come in on the new MM2H will definitely uh, shy away lah, because. There are so many options in Thailand, in Indonesia, or even Vietnam and Cambodia yeah. that has a lot of a lot of potential for, for them to move into, yeah. especially Thailand. You know, uh, can you imagine uh, uh, the these MM2H people? You must realize they are usually above fifty or even sixty or seventy years old. They are they are not contributors to the economic uh, sector of the country that they go into. So um, you should actually encourage people to come in and spend their money, put their money here, you know, uh, uh, to do that. And um, I am quite baffled by what, what the hell they are doing, you know, with this kind of new rules. It's, it's amazing yeah. uh, that they can come up with something like that. Uh. You might as well just stop the MM2H uh, program altogether. Don't, yeah. give, don't give the stupid rules out there and then uh, 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 chase them away. Yeah, super crazy, right? Yeah, super crazy, Peter. But, that's but right. I'm encouraged by what you said that possibly they might not affect those who are already here. No, otherwise it's going yeah, to be really crazy won't. madness. It won't. Yeah, yeah okay. it won't. It won't. All right. Okay. Yeah, I only saw an article recently that uh, there was a survey done on uh, local Malaysians, uh, mm. uh, because of what's happening around us, especially the political situation. Uh, Sixty percent of the people want to leave the country. I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether that is true, but okay. uh, in the beginning of this session, I think Angela was uh, uh, facilitating. I think we need to look on the positive side. Yeah, don't yeah. leave. Don't leave Malaysia. Hang on here. Yeah, and, yeah. And okay. grow together. Okay. Thank you, Peter. All right, Kevin. Anything to add to that? I mm 2 definitely is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, good for Malaysia. Uh, don't be surprised. Uh, Malaysia is uh, number one to Japan uh, as a second home. M Japan, Malaysia is to Japanese. Malaysia is number one country to reside after as a retirement. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we we missed the opportunity when Hong Kong riot, right? And uh, there's a lot of application, but later on, uh, the government decided to on hold and postpone things like that. So I would say I don't know why this government. Uh, sorry to say that it's like bodo lah, or you can say that. They're killing their own uh, golden goose la, to, to do that. I'm not sure why it's, what's the idea. So uh, I don't know what's the agenda, la, basically. In terms of economy-wise, uh, economy and also like investment is not a good thing because it will, the implication will be uh, 
uh, developer is difficult to sell the property, entice the MNTH together to come in. So those are the sector will be uh, impacted. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think maybe this, this is a policy. It may change. Uh, it may change uh, after the new government or something like that. It may change. So hopefully they are still going to hop uh, into this MN2H program. Yeah. So okay. now what is what it is, uh, no point to argue. So let it be first. Uh, I okay. think there will be some changes later on. Yep. All right. Okay. So we come to the end of our session. I just want to give 30 seconds each to each of you in case you have any last words of advice to investors and to our audience. Um, you want to start, uh, Isaac? What would be your last one or two pieces of advice very quickly? Okay, I take it from the view of the uh, subject matter of today's uh, uh, pen talk, uh, property talk. Uh, it's about um, buy now or wait a little longer. I think buy now or wait a little longer, you got to be very specific. It depends on who you are. Uh, as I said earlier, if you are a residential uh, home buyer, um, buying a, a, a house for yourself, any time is a good time as long as you find a suitable property. If you are an investor in the residential sector, it's very important to look out for location, look out for rental yields, and look out for potential capital appreciation because buying now for investment after you satisfy all those uh, factors uh, actually has the potential of upside in the next two, three years. As I said earlier, property is always a long-term investment. If I were to talk about commercial, commercial is about shop houses, is about office, and even uh, retail uh, shopping centers. For shop houses, uh, it's a very um, a popular investment uh, sector that uh, local people buy because those days if you buy shop houses even on plan from developers uh, it's usually at low prices by the time they are ready it gets very good rentals very good rentals for shop house so if you're buying shop houses for long-term investment it is good and usually 10 15 years down the road uh, if the shop houses still do well you would have double your investment for office, um, uh, would not be the same story. For offices, as you can see, the market is quite uh, of uh, oversupply. Uh, we have millions of square feet of office spaces. And uh, at one time, developers were very cleverly selling strata office, office spaces and all that. And everybody rushed into like a, like a go rush like that. But it really depends on same thing. It, it depends on your rental use and it depends on the potential of uh, capital appreciation. Those two items uh, will be determined by whether your office building will be well occupied or not and whether it will be uh, successfully established um, in the five-year five, five medium-term period, 10-year medium-term period. Okay. So um, also <laughs> same, same thing with the retail. As for retail, the... Um, uh, at, at one time also, uh, shopping centers, retail lots were sold individually by Strata. And everybody also rushed in because everybody thought property investment is very good. Retail lots give you very good rentals. But the story is very different today. Um, everybody knows that retail Strata in shopping centers are, are a no-go. Uh, shopping centers only work if it is a single owner, single owner uh, development because they have control over what they want to do. Because if it is sold to different strata retail lots, retail owners, uh, everything will all jumble up and, and yep. the problems will, 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 start to, will start to come up. Okay, uh, thanks, Isaac. Sure, sure, thanks. thanks uh, last words from you, Kevin, in about 45 yeah. seconds. When you buy now, right, I refer to uh, it's a it's a own usage or the investment or own usage, right? You're asking me, hey, is it the best time to get baby? I would say whenever you're ready, just go and make a baby. It's just like you <laughs> want to buy your own house when the financial is ready, and uh, just go ahead and get a house. It's a it's it, there's no like best time is tomorrow or yesterday. If for investment, right, I would say auction could be the potential good market, provided though those people are a bit elder, like for example, like Peter. It is a bit wiser now and also a lot of cash, right? Can consider auction because auction is works best for those people got a lot of cash, for example. 
And also like for those uh, young people, younger, they can uh, eligibility eligibility to get loan right. HOC could be the good idea because the developer giving a lot of discount and also a uh, rebate, things like that. Those could be the good uh, good consideration. If people are looking for industrial property, right, look for the link factory because link factory is uh, at this moment, uh, most developers don't build anymore. But I will say that link, develop, link factory must be in a good price, for example. So those are the good sector to, to look into it. Mm. Yeah, that's my personal okay. uh, uh, feedback. Thank you. Excellent. Good tips. Okay, so with that, uh, we come to the end of our session, but stay back for the Q&A and we're going to open up the Q&A in a little while. And also, uh, I can do a demo on the property transaction uh, report as a demo, for example, later okay, on. Okay, we'll do yeah. that in the Q&A session. Yep. Okay, thanks. Thanks, guys.